Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Monday, August the 1st, 2022. I'm Pastor Brian J. Monroe. This is coming to you from my office at Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And it's uh, time for me to read three passages of scripture for you that are uh, laid out by the Revised Common Lectionary. Just to remind you, we're in year C. A, B, and C, the third year of what is a three-year cycle of reading through the scriptures. And I'm doing this so that you can hear the scriptures. Maybe you're too busy to read them, or maybe you've never actually heard them read. Uh, although there are wonderful versions of the Bible that are entirely read. But I'm reading these because they're put together to follow the church year. And I think there's something to be said for that. This is how the vast majority of Christians received the Word of God before there was printing and before there was widespread education and people could read. And so we're hearing what countless Christians before us would have heard on this day of the appropriate year. We'll begin with Psalm 60. And just a reminder, or just to let you know if you're new here, if the word Salah appears in this uh, psalm, and it does appear here, I will pause for 10 seconds because that is what that word is commanding to do. And uh, that's, that's how it's supposed to be used. It's not supposed to be read. It's supposed to simply say pause. And so we will do that. So we begin. By the way, when I, the stuff that I read before I get to the first verse, the superscriptions, these things actually appear in the text. So Psalm 60. To the choir master, according to... Shushan Eduth, a miktam of David, for instruction, when he strove with Aram Naharaim and with Aram Zobah, and when Joab on his return struck down 12,000 of Edom in the Valley of Salt. O oh God, you have rejected us, broken our defenses, you've been angry. Oh, restore us. You have made the land to quake. You've torn it open. Repair its breaches, for it totters. You have made your people see hard things. You have given us wine to drink that made us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you, that they may flee to it from the bow. that your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer us. God has spoken in his holiness. With exaltation, I will divide up Shechem and portion out the veil of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. Upon Edom I cast my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go forth, O God, with our armies. Oh, grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Now the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, chapter 11, verses 12 to chapter 12, verse 14. Ephraim has surrounded me with lies and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah still walks with God and is faithful to the Holy One. Ephraim feeds on the wind and pursues the east wind all day long. They multiply falsehood and violence. They make a covenant with Assyria and oil is carried to Egypt. The Lord has an indictment against Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. He will repay him according to his deeds. In the womb he took his brother by the heel and in his manhood he strove with God he strove with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his favor. He met God at Bethel 
and there God spoke with us. The Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial name. So you, by the help of your God, return. Hold fast to love and justice and wait continually for your God. A merchant in whose hands are false balances, he loves to oppress. Ephraim has said, Ah, but I am rich. I have found wealth for myself. In all my labors they cannot find in me iniquity or sin. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. I will again make you dwell in tents as in the days of the appointed feast. I spoke to the prophets. It was I who multiplied visions and through the prophets gave parables. If there is iniquity in Gilead, they shall surely come to nothing. In Gilgal, they sacrifice bulls. Their altars also are like stone heaps on the furrows of the field. Jacob fled to the land of Aram, where Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he guarded sheep. But a prophet but by a prophet the Lord brought Israel up from Egypt, and by a prophet he was guarded. Ephraim has given bitter provocation, so this Lord will leave his blood guilt on him and will repay him, will repay him for his disgraceful deeds. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 18 to chapter 4, verse 1. Paul writes, Wives, Submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, Treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. This is your eternal word, Almighty God. May you be praised for the good and generous and gracious provision of it to us. And may you grant us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the ability to hear it, to receive it, to have it enter into us, our hearts, our minds, our very souls, and therein do what is good and pleasing to you, to your glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, from Oswald Chambers' wonderful devotional, My Utmost for His Highest, we read for August 1st the entry entitled, Something More About His Ways. He comes where he commands us to leave. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. If when God said go, you stayed, because you were so concerned about your people at home, you robbed them of the teaching and preaching of Jesus Christ himself. When you obeyed and left all consequences to God, the Lord went into your city to teach. As long as you would not obey, you were in the way. Watch where you begin, begin to debate and put what you call duty in competition with your Lord's commands. I know God told me to go, but when my duty was here, that means you do not, but then my duty was here. That means you do not believe that Jesus means what he says. He teaches where he instructs us not to. Master, let us make three tabernacles. That's what Peter said. Are we playing the spiritual amateur providence in our lives? 
Are we so noisy in our instruction of others that God cannot get anywhere near them? We have to keep our mouths shut and our spirits alert. God wants to instruct us in regard to his Son. He wants to turn our times of prayer into mounts of transfiguration, and we will not let him. When we are certain of the way God is going to work, he will never work in that way any more. He works where he sends us to wait. Wait until, he says. Wait on God and he will work, but don't wait in spiritual sulks because you cannot see an inch in front of you. Are we detached enough from our own spiritual hysterics to wait on God? To wait is not to sit with folded hands, but to learn to do what we are told. These are phrases of his ways we rarely recognize. Let us pray. Father, it is in these moments when you tell us to stay and we go, or you tell us to go and we stay, or you tell us to wait and we hurry on, or you tell us now is the time to move and we wait. How can we be so disobedient and so blind? Even if it doesn't look to us from, from our very, very limited human perspective that it is the time to go, or it is the time to stay, or it is the time to act, or it is the time to be patient, Yes, we must trust that your perspective is far, far better than ours. And that your commands to us are in our best interest, even as they bring glory to your name. May we learn to respond correctly when you command us. May we learn to listen wait and then respond in joy when we are told we pray this to your great glory father god in the name of jesus christ, jesus christ your son our savior our redeemer our soon returning king amen thanks friends again i commend you for spending some time listening to the word it's always a good thing and um, i pray that also you you find this time to be something that helps you focus on god until we're able to be together again to do more of the same, which I hope would be tomorrow, I bid you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.